Hello, this is Haku Bean, and today we are going to be reading about... Well, we're going to be continuing the Bellaverse with SCP-1000,000. For those of you who have not yet seen the main idea of the Bellaverse, it's about the SCP Foundation. A few, I'm guessing, thousands of years after the SCP Foundation has gone away. And a huge apocalypse wiped out most of humanity. Except for a very, very small population of a few Foundation members and a whole lot of D-Class on the continent of Australia. Makes sense that Australia would uh, eventually... Never mind, that's a dumb joke. Anyway. That's as far as we're going to go. Some things are going to be said a little bit incorrectly. Like, sites are called Saitu in this is canon. And there are some other things that we could talk about as well, but that's not important. If you like this video, please leave a like on the video, comment down below, and subscribe to the channel. Now let's get right into this. Hmm. Tell me of the thing, the shaman said. It lives in the... I started. No! The stick came down hard on my knuckles. Begin with how to stop it, how to keep it held. Always. What it is can wait until after. I rubbed my hand and began again. The people must always be ready. They must keep their eyes to the south to watch for the Everman. They must keep their eyes to the east to watch for the city people who pick among the ruins for toys they cannot understand. They must keep their eyes to the seas for things that come across the water. Ours are a deadly threat. They must keep their eyes inward for the greatest threat comes from men who know. No man may enter the oh wait, it's still the same person. No man may enter the antechamber, but uh, that he comes to light the fires once more, or else that he is a shaman going for a vision quest. He will enter with one other, and neither may leave ex except with the other. When they leave, they close the doors shut tight behind them. At all times, there will be five guardians at the door, choosing also from um, the people who and trained in war. They will keep their spears sharp. When one sleeps, another comes to replace him. Their dogs will sleep at their feet, ready to challenge any who come um, from with, um, outside or within. I looked up at the shaman. Now? He nodded. You know how to keep it held, Od. Now you must say what it is. The SP, I'm guessing that's SCP, called a wonder by the Ignorant holds the number of a thousand thousands. It is of the, the kind called Qatar, the all consuming. I took a deep breath. There are two parts of the SP. Of the first, which we shall call the, the Aleph, is a dream of butterflies. They are held off by burning, by the burning of certain herbs. It is therefore that we keep the fires lit, remain watchful, should they go out. The dream of butterflies gives a man visions. Strange scenes of times far past. I myself have seen these visions once. I saw men and women dressed strangely in long white coats. Uh, they spoke in a language I did not understand. And of the other, the bait? That's the most dangerous part. Right. Though in seeming it is nothing but old man, in other lands he is called a god or a devil. We know he is just a man who has lived a very long time. That's what gives him power. I closed my eyes. He was one of the first to leave the home site to. We do not know how he came to live so long. Perhaps through the efforts of the Everman. Perhaps from another SP hidden deep in chambers we have not seen. It does not matter. He lives. That is enough. And he knows the, secret, the secrets from the time before. His knowledge is the poison that must be kept from the world. And that is why we keep him held. As our ancestors did before us.
good enough so far, the shaman admitted. You spoke early the words of others, honorably, but a shaman cannot uh, simply speak like a parrot. You have been inside. You have seen the bait. Add to our knowledge. Tell me what he told you. He, he asked me to help him escape. He promised me great weapons, riches beyond my dreams. I refuse, for we know him for a liar. He told me he was a, he was imprisoned unjustly. He cursed me, and then cursed or er, er, gay or above, and cut off the love for holding him in there. I, I fled. I am not a brave man. I make no excuse for this. My companion found me, and we left the chamber. I turned my face in shame. You did nothing wrong, the shaman said, placing a hand on my shoulder. Many who have gone in and have not returned. The dream butterflies, as and the old one, are strong. And we know they wish to get it past us. We serve, we contain, we protect. Protect, I echoed. Until the gods return. Looks like we're reading more than just one million, because that was entirely too short. So, we are also going to be reading the book. The book teaches. The book guides. Ellie repeated the mantra to herself, her voice trembling. The key that the book had performed her last reading several days ago, and now her body was being prepared for passage into a bird's realm. Consequently, the task of the keeper of the book had fallen to Alia. She had spent years preparing for this moment. She had been purified in the waters of the earth. She had studied the writings of her forebears, and she had traveled to the home Saitu in a dream trance. From this day until her last, only Alia would, would be able to perceive the numerous manifestations of the book and interpret their teachings. To be the keeper of the book was to be the leader of her people. She was to do this until the day of her last reading, when she would give herself to a birth. The book teaches, the book guides. The book had given her people much. It had taught them of sea craft, borne by wind, with which they traveled to the Northern Isles. It had taught them of tools used to prepare the harsh land for crops, so that food could be grown in abundance. It had taught them of the meaning of metals, from which weapons and for hunting could be e e crafted. Alia, it was for Ace of, of Joran, Alia's tutor and caretaker. She had not heard him enter. It's time for your first reading. I, I'm not ready, Joran. Do not worry, child. You have performed the rites. The book will look favorably upon you. Come now. Dorian pushed aside the colored fabric, draped over the doorway, and motioned to Alia. She hesitated briefly, then rose and exited the room through the gap in the cloth. Alia stood alone outside the heavy wooden door leading into the chamber of readings. Her hand resting on the doorknob, she inhaled deeply, opened the door, and entered into the chamber. A circular room was dimly lit by two braziers on either side of the doorway. A cylindrical stone pedestal reoccupied the center of the room, the book lying open on top. Alia walked up to the pedestal and examined the book. It was extremely bland. This was an object revered by, revered by hundreds. It had served as a guide for her people for generations. The last thing she had expected it to be was dull. And yet, it was dull. Little more than aged paper bound in black. Alia picked up the book and slowly... He thumbed through its yellow pages. They were all blank. She set the book back down on its pedestal, taking care to close it. Alia placed her hand on the cover of the book and said the required words. As she had been instructed. Grant me your knowledge so that I may teach them. Grant me your wisdom so I may lead them. Grant me your guidance so that I may teach so I may show them oh, the way. Alia withdrew her hand, but the book was unchanged. She knew that the book would soon alter itself. She merely had to wait for it to do so. Doubts began to rise up in her mind. Would her people accept her as the new keeper of the book so readily? What if she failed to interpret the book's guidance correctly? 
While I wasn't sure exactly when the book had changed, she had been sitting against the curved walls of the chamber. Only occasionally, a glance at it. From across the room, she could tell that the thickness of the book had increased. It was now at least twice as large as it had been. I stood up with trepidation and walked slowly towards the pedestal. She picked up the book and flicked through its pages as before. However, this time they displayed words and diagrams. Ollie was relieved. The book had accepted her as its new keeper, even though she dreaded the day of her last reading. Alia was grateful for the opportunity to serve her people. She closed the book and turned it over in her hands. On the front cover, in bold white text, were the words, How to Fight a War. Oh dear. Looks like the book is sending them to war for someone. Is it for themselves, or is it for or something else? And I wonder what that book is. I don't think I've read that SCP. It does sound familiar, but so does SCP-1000, which I imagine is actually a different SCP altogether, if you actually know anything about SCPs. An immortal man that gives people dreams of butterflies? That is familiar for some reason. I'll be sure to um, look into these, these later. That is it for today's video. This has been SCP-1000 and the book. If you liked the video, please leave a like on the video, comment down below, and subscribe to the channel. I don't know what I'm going to be doing tomorrow, but I will see you then. Until then, goodbye!